Now, you might have fiddled with After Effects without knowing about this, but you see that button here that says 8-bit? You might be wondering, what is this and why should I care? Well, let's dive right into this button right here and talk a bit more in depth about, well, bit depth. So what bit depth means is basically how many bits of data can your image store or more specifically each of your R, G and B channels can store. Now, to go even further back on this term, the word bit is a computer term for data storage and typically a bit can only contain two values. That's why it's a little bit, you know, little baby bits. But anyway, those two values, yeah, namely zero or one. Generally, the higher the bit depth, the better your image quality because you have more bit sizes and space to store your data and image information. This concept is also known as bits per channel or BPC. Now, obviously, there's a lot more to it, but because I made a promise not to bore you to death, you can find out more information about it here. Now, in general, the lower the bit depth, the less smoothed out your tone variations and gradients, as you can see right here. What do I mean by that? Well, basically, it looks more choppy in between the changes of tone or shade of color. Hence, the higher probability of getting an effect that is known as banding in your tonal graduation. With all that being said, you might now be wondering, okay, so why bother using 8 bits at all? Well, it all boils down to what you are doing and how large you can afford your file size to be. Now, what about color space then? Since bit depth also plays a key role in how your color is represented, the argument with color space is with which setting then to use. There are, after all, many theories out there about which color space to use, but what you really need to know as a compositor is simple. What did the studio say? What is your shot's original color space? What is the director's choice of color space? And that is really all you need to know for now at this stage. Now let's try to put those two theories into practice. Let's start by looking at our footage clip properties right here. And you can do this by clicking on your clip, right clicking and going to interpret footage main. Now obviously we'll be going to the color management tab. And as you can see, there is no embedded color profile for our clip. We are basically just using our workspace color profile for our entire composition. Let's click cancel. And you also see that this is similar to the other sci-fi elements that we have. If you go to right click, interpret footage main, the same thing with color management is none as well. However, if you see this eight bits per channel here, click on this. And as you can see, our working space is exactly identical to our imported footage. That's because we have nothing set. Now let's see if you can fine tune this in the color depth and the color working space. Let's first set eight bits to 16 bits and our working space to sRGB, which is pretty much the default working space for most Adobe software. See, it's kind of processing here. And whoa, what just happened? Did my color just change? Yes, it did. Basically, it's now set to the color tonation of an sRGB. Now, this actually looks pretty ugly. So once again, like I said earlier on in the lecture, it is all about what setting you want to use. Either way, you get the point. But now that you have a 16 bits per channel setting, you'll notice that your render time is probably going to be a little bit longer just because we have more data stored in our pixels. And to illustrate this point, I'm going to zoom in and see if there's actually a literal pixel change difference when I set this back to 8 bits per channel. As you can see, the pixel values did shift a little where it became less refined in 8 bits but more refined in 16 bits. Now, if I zoom in even closer, you can actually see this in effect. And we're going to do that again. 8 bits, 16 bits. 8 bits, 16 bits. Now, the key important thing to note about adjusting your color space values of your entire work comp as well as your clip is just to make sure that all your elements and your comps are all rendered out in the same color space. So basically, do not mix color spaces. For example, earlier on you saw that it looks pretty fugly when I changed it to Adobe, right? You can see the footage here immediately lost its green screen chroma keying capabilities. So you want to make sure that all of your elements are all set to the same color space before you render. Ultimately, the key in composting is always to keep as much of the original footage's properties and elements and aspects as possible. Whew. 
Now that was quick and painless, isn't it? With all that jazz aside, in the next lesson, we will finally get to rendering our final output and talk about render formats use in the industry, including how to optimize your composition for rendering.